supported or how a simply supported beam is being acted upon by different loads and how this load is converted into reaction phase and then sorted so that we can design the structure in a efficient way these are very basic concepts which we are going to discuss today so let us start with what is a beam it is a structural member used for bearing loads it is typically used for resisting vertical load shear forces and bending moments for now we are not going to discuss about shear forces and bending moments but yes the one of import one of the important topics what we are going to discuss further is going to be the vertical loads acting on the beam beam is basically a structural member in simple words you can say that the member which supports the load coming from the slab and then this member transfers the load to the column of the structure let us see what are the supports on which the beam stands so the first support on which it stands is the roller support it is represented with such symbol and the reaction force is acting in the vertical direction as i proceed in the video you will understand where these supports lie the second one is the pin support it is represented by this symbol and the reaction force is in the horizontal as well as the vertical direction the direction of reaction force is the direction of resisting load that is a roller support is resisted in the vertical direction there will be no vertical movement a better example for the roller support is the roller skate where your body weight is the vertical load which is being acting on the skate and is being balanced properly whereas the horizontal load is not balanced and hence with the help of the wheels the skate move ahead the second one is the pin support here horizontal as well as vertical load both are the resisting loads a hinge of the door is very good example of the pin support the third category is the fixed support a fixed support does not allow movement in any of the direction that is moments there there are three concepts here one is the horizontal force the vertical force and the moments acting all of them are the resisting loads a flag post pole or a stagnant object is a very good example of this fixed support since the practical completely is going to be based on a simply supported beam or on a simple beam we will see what is it a simply supported beam is that type of beam that has pinned support at one end and roller support at the other end as i was discussing before there are different types of support and the support lie at the end members or at the end side of the structure beam in the diagram below here where i am moving my cursor you can see that there is a beam ab with this with the length l and it is supported by two support this is the pinned support or also called as the hinge support and these the other support here is the roller support it is one of the simplest structural elements in existence and we are going to study the reaction forces on the same now what are the different types of loading which are acting on the beam the first category is the point load so you can see that this there is a beam where i am moving my cursor and it is resting on two supports it is a simple beam and you can see that there is a load acting at a distance a from the leftmost edge of the beam the effective force at the load centroid will be acting at the same place where the load is point load is being acting the second is the uniformly distributed load you can see that the load is that load of w kilo newton per meter you can see or w units is acting on this surface of the beam equally that the load acting on this point is similar to that of the middle section to that of the other edge overall the load acting is uniform and hence it is named as uniformly distributed load it can be converted into effective load taking the taking the product of the intensity of load acting multiplied by the length of that particular beam so the intensity of load was w and let us consider that the length of the beam was l so the intensity of the point load acting here will be w into l now where it will act it will act exactly at the center where the udl or the uniformly distributed load is acting that is at a distance of l by 2 from the left or l by 2 from the right in case of a triangular distributed load 
the intensity of load acting and at one edge is w and the other edge is zero you can see that the intensity of load gradually goes on decreasing and is in the triangular form now how this is converted into effective force is the load will be acting at the centroid of this triangle which will be at a distance of l by 3 from the left and 2 by 3 of l from the right end now what will be the intensity of load intensity of the load here will be half into base that is the length of the beam that will be l into intensity that will be w so that will be half into w into l so it makes the value to be wl by 2 as per the discussion for our practical today we are going to deal only with the point load that is the first category so let us move towards the practical this is how the apparatus assembly looks like there is a beam where I am moving my cursor there is a small strip of beam you can see there is a scale mounted on the beam and the distance or the this scale is of 1 meter overall there are two dial gauges kind of structures you can see here these are the spring balances which give the value of the loads acting on at this point as well as this point let us name this as A where the reaction force RA acts and the other one as B where the reaction force RB acts this is how the assembly structure is I will explain you the procedure but before going to that let us see what is the aim of this today's experiment it is to verify the equilibrium of coplanar parallel force system and the second one is to determine the support reactions of a given beam so this is the beam which we are, of which we are going to determine the support reaction what we will do we will have hang three weights that is w1 w2 and w3 at different distances that is l1 distance for w1 l2 distance for w2 and l3 distance for w3 the overall distance between point a and point b is going to be l so this is how I suppose the assembly of the apparatus is understood. Now let us move how the reactions on the beam will be acting. Due to the weight W1 there will be a reaction force acting here. Due to W2 the other will be acting here. And due to weight W3 the reaction force will be acting here. The spring balances are since they are at the resting position will be having the reaction forces in the upward direction that is RA and RB as we have shown in the diagram here as well as here. Now what we are going to do is we are going to make a combination of two cases. In the first case we will keep the weights constant that is W1, W2 and W3 will be the same and we will vary the length from the point A that is L1, L2 and L3 we will vary. In the second case, we will keep the length constant, that is L1, L2, L3 will be fixed, but the weights which are being applied at these places will be different. What happens in this apparatus? When you apply, when you apply load at W1, W2 and W3, of W1, W2, W3 kgs at these three points, the spring balance A and spring balance B are going to show the reaction force acting at point A and point B respectively. So based on that we will prepare a tabular form of the experimental reading so that you understand. Our first case, in the first case what we are going to do is same weights and different distances. So W1, W2, W3 the weights acting on the beam will be the same. Let us suppose that they are, we have thought of adding 1, 1, 1 kgs of W1, W2, W3 each. And they are placed at a distance of 0 0.25, 0 0.5 and 0 0.75 meters. Let me remind you once again that the whole distance of this beam is 1 meter. And we have taken the values of W1 at 0.5, 0 0.25, W2 at 0 0.5 and W3 at 0.75. Now, this is our first set of readings. When we apply 1 1 kg load at these distances, on an average approximately, this is what the reading what we have obtained 1.6 and 1.6 kg at RA as well as RB spring balance. Now, after getting this, what is that we have to do? These are the experimental values of the readings what we have obtained from the apparatus. In every practical, what we do is we 
take the experimental readings and try to prove that try to determine the readings analytically and then we try to determine how experimental and analytical readings are similar so what we have done here is i have taken a sample calculation for the readings w1 w2 w3 as 1 kg and l1 l2 l3 as 0 0.25 0 0.5 and 0.75 these are the values now looking at the assembly this is how the reaction force will be we will be applying three equilibrium conditions on these reactions and try to determine the value of reaction force r a as well as value of reaction force r b i have included this smaller form of diagram so that you understand from where these equations for the equilibrium conditions come now the first equilibrium condition is summation of fx is equal to 0 here there are no horizontal forces acting on the beam hence the fx 0 will not be described further and the second is summation of fy is equal to 0 that is all the forces acting in the vertical direction based on this we get the form of reaction as ra plus rb that is both the forces acting in the upward direction on the lhs will be equal to all the forces acting in the downward direction so we get the expression as ra plus rb is equal to w1 plus w2 plus w3 now i substitute the value of all the weights what we have considered as 1 1 and 1 kg each the ultimate form of reaction we get is ra plus rb is equal to 3 now third equilibrium condition is taking moment at any of the points let us consider that we are taking the moment at point a so when we take a moment at point a we are going to take it in this form that will be w1 into l1 plus w2 into l2 plus w3 into l3 the moment about any point is equivalent to the distance of the weights acting or the reactions acting and the product of those weights into the distances at which they are acting and that is how we get this expression that is w1 plus w1 l1 plus w2 l2 plus w3 l3 will be equivalent to the last force that is rb now this will be acting in the anti-clockwise direction into the whole distance l and that is why we get this second equation substituting the values of l1 and w1 we ultimately determine the value of rb as we can see here in the equation only rb value is to be determined rest everything is substituted thus solving the equation we get rb is equal to 1.5 and putting this value of rb in, in this equation of ra plus rb is equal to 3 we get the value as ra is equal to 1.5 now all these reactions what we have got are in kg since the weights we had applied are in kg later we can convert them into newton when we will note down the values in observation table number t1 so the observations here will be l1 l2 l3 will be the lengths at which the weights are kept the weights will be constant hence we are not going to mention the weights in this tabular form anywhere since we know that the weights are constant i am repeating the weights are constant and hence this observation table does not include the weights readings now experimental values of ra and rb in kgs what we had got from the spring balance will be converted to newton and substituted here the value of ra and rb from the sample calculation what i have shown will be put here in the column as i am showing in the diagram or in the video the third or the important the last important part is the percentage error now what we are going to do is we are trying to see how analytical values differ from the experimental values we are trying to validate the experimental data with the analytical values so we will determine the percentage error using this formula similarly we will take different set of readings this was one set of reading what i have explained now what we will do we will keep the weights constant and keep the lengths varying we will keep the lengths as 0 0.3 0 0.5 0 0.93 we will get some values for experimental values in the spring balances for ra and rb and we will take such more three set of readings 
This is how we will complete the observation table T1. Similarly, coming to the second condition, where we are keeping the length constant, that is the distance at which the weights are placed will be the same, but the weight which we are going to apply is going to vary. So L1, L2 and L3 is constant, that is for complete experiment for all the 5 readings, L1 will be 0.25, L2 will be 0.5 and L3 will be 0.75 meter from left hand side, that is from point A. Now, W1, W2, W3 are the weights what we have applied and we have received some experimental values like this. As I have shown sample calculation for the first part, with the same procedure, we are going to determine the, we are going to go for the sample calculation analysis. These are the experimental values noted down. We will go to the observation table T2, noting down the forces, that is weights will be in kgs. When we multiply them with 9.81, they will be converted into forces and we will write down the values of weights here in the first row of the columns. In the experimental value row, you will be mentioning the values whatever we have received on the spring balance. In the analytical one, you will go for the calculations as I have shown in the sample calculation and later you will determine the percentage error for RA and RB with respect to experimental as well as analytical value justifying or trying to validate the experimental data with an analytical backup. This is how we end the discussion of all the practical and this is how all of the reaction forces of experimental data can be validated with analytical values. As we have to take various number of readings in case of the first case that is we have to take 5 readings here. Similarly, for the second case also, we are going to take 5 set of readings. Later, we will take the average of the, average of the percentage error for RA and RB in both the case 1 as well as case 2 from observation table T1 and T2. And ultimately, we will determine the experimental and analysis difference. Thank you. Once again, I remind you, kindly give your feedback in the comment section. If anything is to be updated, it will be updated. If you have any kind of queries, you can ask in the comment box. Please do like the video. Thank you.